the strength of my life. And because of that, my response would be, I will lift my hands in total adoration unto you. God is such a good God. Even on a cold winter morning, in Southern Northern know I'm going to say it again and see who's going to talk back to me in the comment section. God is still a good God. Even on a cold winter morning in winter, we give God all the praise, the glory. Somebody was like, Pastor, what did you expect this February? God is yet still God and good. <laughs> on a cold winter morning in February. Well, good morning again, and then welcome to the Hope at Home, Hopewell Experience. Hopewell everywhere, literally everywhere. People are tuned in all over the country as we lift up and celebrate the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are delighted um, that you have tuned in this morning to be a part of the Hopewell Experience. If you have not already, Go ahead and share. Go ahead and invite. Go ahead and pass the word along and let people know that Hope at Home is live, coming at you right now from 400 East Main Street in the wonderful city of Carbondale, Illinois. Again, we're so glad that you are here with us. Feel free to share, tag others, and to give at any time to help us to do what the Lord has called for us to do. Before we get to the word, just one thing, a vote of thanks that I want to be able to share to all of those um, that helped us um, and celebrating the life of Sister Odessa Meeks um, on this past Wednesday. On behalf of the family, thank you so much for all of those that came and came through the walkthrough visitation that we're here as part of the service um, to help us to be able to celebrate the life of an amazing woman. I said this Wednesday and I will say it forever. And again, Sister Odessa was someone that kept her apron in her purse. I, I really believe it. Either she kept her apron in her purse or in her car um, because whenever there was another event going on in any church, she just popped up and she was in the kitchen helping to serve I had to remind myself and ask. I said, Miss Odessa, I said, have you left home? Well, she said, Reverend, I ain't left. I'm just helping wherever I see the need. I said, well, that's all right with me, ma'am. You keep on helping. Let me give you a Hopewell shirt so that the pastors will know, amen, that you are Team Hopewell all day. But she will truly truly be missed. I'm so appreciative to our own brother Ben, um, Russell, and Minister Ford that were here with me. Uh, I'm grateful for a team that's sacrificing um, just to be here with me during the week, but especially during a pandemic um, to make sure that we can be able to be safe in all that we do and to be able to um, celebrate her life in the spirit of essence. So I'm always appreciative of our team here at The Well. We do what we need to do, and we make no excuses um, about it. Thank you. This is a card uh, from my own brother Ben Russell. Again, he lost his sister a few weeks ago. He says, Dear Pastor Swims, as I listened while the resolution was being read, I was overcome by a rush of emotions and I felt the love and support of my Hopewell family. I truly appreciate you and your leadership. Um, and my brothers and my beautiful brothers and sisters at the well, they all rock. The cars, the plant and fruit baskets, gifts, all were most appreciated. I cannot take you enough. Just two words to express so much gratitude. Thank you um, for Brother Ben Russell. We know that even though uh, COVID-19 is here, everybody that dies is not related to COVID-19. Um, but even in the midst of this, grief is a hard thing to be able to bear um, because of physical distancing. Uh, but we made sure that even in the great city of Peoria, um, that Brother Ben and his and the entire uh, Russell family knew um, that they were loved and represented um, by the Hopewell family. So again, thank you, Team Hopewell, for stepping up, reaching out, and just doing what we do um, to be able to love on each other. Amen. In times of need. Let's get to the Word of God. First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12. As you're looking for that, don't be afraid to look in your table of contents. It's been a while since you've been in Chronicles. Amen. So go ahead and go to 1 Chronicles chapter 12. Just one verse, verse 32, as we go into the word of God. As you're looking for that, over the next few weeks, you are going to hear me 
preach and teach through our vision of 2021 and the years to follow. Um, this is the year that we shift. Everybody say shift. Amen. Make sure you add the F in there. Amen. This is the year that we shift. Put that in the comment section. Amen. This is the year um, that we're going to be socially aware of issues in our community, in our city, in our region. This is going to be the year that we have a heart for small groups. This is going to be the year um, that we're going to impact our community through outreach. This is the year that we're going to be fervent in prayer. And this is the year that, um, that we're going to teach and train our children and our youth. Where we're going to change in our direction, change and, and change in our intention and what we do um, in these next coming years. First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. And it reads as this. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the time and knew the best course for Israel to take. I want to preach this morning from the title of our theme, Shift. Shift, that's all I want to talk about today is shift. Don't forget, add that F or you get in trouble with your grandma. Shift. Father, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you for the power and the liberation of your word. Your word is powerful, God. It's a bomb. And when our life comes in contact with it, it explodes and gets shattered into other pieces. And your word puts the pieces back together and builds a new foundation so that we can be able to grow. We've already made up in our minds, Father God, that when we woke up this morning, that as we tune in the service, that we were going to obey Whatever it is your word was challenging us to do, we thank you and we praise you. It's your name that we pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. In 2001, Jacques Nasir, a.k.a. Jack the Knife, was let go as his role of the CEO of Ford Motor Company. Why, Pastor? In just three years' time, he caused Ford to lose billions of dollars because he failed to study the current trends and to respond accordingly. Mm -hmm. And again, failing to study and analyze the current things, the current, the current things that were happening, what was new, cost them billions of dollars. In an article, it says that Ford lost its focus on making cars and turned their attention to providing automotive goods and services. Henceforth, by them turning their focus from making vehicles, they were losing sight of the purpose of their creation. Mm -hmm. Nasir overestimated the importance of the internet. As the internet came into play in the early 90s, Nasir failed to study the trend and to be a part of the next wave of what was happening, thus resulting in Ford not being relevant to the times at hand. Mm -hmm. Hopewell, friends, all of those that are tuned in this morning, I need you over these next few weeks, over these next few months, as I'm preaching and teaching our vision to hear me and to hear me loud and clear. Church as we know it has changed right, right. and has changed forever. Amen. All right. This is the time now for the church to begin to redefine who we are, who she is, according to the word of God, to study the trends of what's going on in our world, even though, even though I know I already hear somebody, I already hear my sanctified brother and sister say, listen, I'm not of this world. You absolutely, we're just pilgrim passing through. But while we are here, we are yet still called mm -hmm. to reach this present age 
and to serve the people of God and to continue to evangelize and to go off after souls. Here it is, saints of God. Our, our message stays the same. We preach Christ and him crucified. We preach the power of the cross. We, pe we preach the power of his blood. We preach the power of relationship with Jesus. We still believe there is only one way to be able to get to right. heaven and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. But our methods and what we do and how we do, our strategy has to change. Yeah in what we do to serve this present age. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that if we fail to do what we need to do in adjusting and adapting and changing to the present culture that we're in, not changing to be able to please, but changing to be able to relate, to relate so that we can be able to present the gospel even though it's thousands of years old but still relevant right till today to be able to present it in a fresh way where people can be able to encounter Christ. We will be like Jack the Knife. We will forget the purpose of our creation in winning souls. We will, we, will, we, will, we, will, we will forfeit our right to be relevant to the times that are at stake. Mm -hmm. Thus causing us to lose plenty of souls that we feel to come in contact with to bring to Jesus, but because we fail to shift and to adapt and to adjust, we will find ourselves not relevant anymore. Please hear me, saints of God. Please hear my heart this morning. As I challenge us as a church, as the body of believers, as the body of Christ, I'm not responsible spiritually for any other church before, but Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church, 400 East Main Street, Carbondale, Illinois, 62901. Call us, 618-529-3975. Fax us, hey, man, 618. We still got a fax machine, 529-5020. I'm only responsible for these flock of believers that God has entrusted into my care to be able to lead, to ensure that we stick to the good news of Jesus Christ, that we stick to the book, but yet we still remain relevant, relevant. Mm -hmm. to the times that we're living in. I love this story right here because just in one verse there's so much preaching power and so much preaching potential that you and I cannot fail to ignore to see what this text has to say to us today in 2021 in the midst of a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's a group of men that were known as the sons of Issachar that had the wisdom and discernment to be able to lead Israel, to guide Israel to where God desired to be. The sons of Issachar were men, were a group of men that understood the times, they understood the trends, they studied, they studied the word of God, they were, they were, they were good at knowing the law, they studied culture and everything that was around them mm -hmm. to make sure that they were, that they always remained re relevant to the times that they lived. They knew, they understood that Saul's, that Saul's, loot, that Saul's rulership and leadership was soon coming to an end. And because they knew that the Bible says they rallied around David because they knew that God had taken his hand off of Saul and that David was going to be the new king that was going to be able to lead them knowing he was not perfect, knowing that he would have some issues, but knowing that God's hand was on his life. Realizing, realizing that there would be a woman by the name of Deborah over in the book of Judges that God was going to raise up to be able to lead Israel as a judge. They understood the times. They understood the culture. Right. They understood the trends. And they had, their, they had their ears to the mouth of God to hear what God was saying. And they were able to bag up a woman in leadership. Oh, right. I know, I know. It's 2021, but you still have some that have an issue with women being in leadership, have an issue with submitting to a woman in leadership. But if the sons of Israel 
Issachar, this ain't my message, but it's right there. I got to throw it in there. But if the sons of Issachar understood that it does not matter the gender, we just need somebody that God has his hands on. If it is a woman, if it is a kid, if it is a donkey, we don't care. We just need someone that has a hand of God on their life that can be able to lead us to where God desires for us to be. All right. The sons of Issachar, this is also the, 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 this can also be known as the Issachar anointing. I like the way Pastor Mark Batterson, how he defines it. He says the Issachar anointing is both practical and prophetic. Let me say it again. He like I like what he says. He says, he says, I wish I had thought of it myself, but I just take it and borrow for him and give him credit for it. He says the Issachar anointing is both practical and prophetic. What do you mean by practical, Pastor? It's practical is that they discern what is going on and they discern what needs to be done. And after they discern what needs to be done, they get it done. All right. And it's prophetic is that it's not just looking at it right now, but it's able to have supernatural insight about what's going to happen in the future. Let me take a break real quick and talk about the prophetic real quick because some of us, I include myself in them, have almost has been spooked off by the prophetic because now we have prophets rising up everywhere. Oh my gosh, I've never seen a moment or a season in all of my life where everybody is a prophet. Everybody is prophet line. That in order for you to be able to get a prophet, a prophecy, you got to sow a seed of Psalms 91 and 2 and then they'll be able to give you a prophecy. Oh, but let me help us out, my brothers and sisters, that the prophetic is still in work today, but we have to be able to have the to know who is a real prophet of God and who is not a prophet of God. Because here it is, saints of God, if you have to go around and encouraging people to call you by a name or a title that you gave yourself, the issue is not about you being a prophet. The issue is that you are insecure and you are uncertain about yourself and you need to be on the altar with a deacon and a church brother to help pray you through so that you can find out who you are in Christ and not have all of your validation in a title. Uh -huh. that you gave your self the prophetic is not something that we should be afraid of the prophetic is not something that needs to be spooky oh i'm leery of spooky things that in order for you to prophesy you gotta you gotta shake you gotta buck your eyes have to roll in the back of your head no it don't take all of that that's why i thank god for the old church and the seasoned church and the seasoned saints of old because they didn't buck they didn't their eyes didn't roll in the back of their head they didn't have a title but they could tell you what the good news of jesus christ was they could tell you what god was going to do they were able to discern what was going on and what was going to happen next why because they had a prayer life and a connection with God that God trusted them enough to be able to download certain things in their spirit and they knew what to say, okay. when to say it, and when and how to say it. Yeah. Go ahead. So let us not be afraid, my Baptist saints, of the prophetic. Let us not be afraid of embracing the prophetic because here it is. Be, we look at it right here. It is clear as day that the sons of Issachar, that they operated in the prophetic. It wasn't spooky, but they were practical along with it. It wasn't no deja vu. It was nothing It was nothing out of outer space that you would really have to think about and trying to figure out what they're saying. They weren't talking in King James Version trying to prophesy to you. They made it very practical and simple about what it was they needed to do and how they were going to get it done. I'm almost done. Here it is. If we are going to shift as a church, again, we have to embrace the practical and the prophetic of the Issachar anointing so that we can be able, just like the sons of Issachar, so that when things happen that we're not caught off guard, we will know what is going on and what needs to be done and how we're going to, be, how we're going to respond and have the boldness and the courage to be able to do it. Here it is. If we're going to shift hope, well, if we're going to shift saints, here it is. We have to understand the times. Oh, I know that was real deep. It's really not deep. It's real simple. Practical. I told you what it is. The Issachar anointing is practical and it's prophetic. We have to understand the times. 
Pastor, what do you mean by understanding the times? We have to study culture and know what is happening in our world right now. I know, once again, we're still in the midst of a global pandemic, but it has taken the covers off of so many things that now we need to look with our spiritual lenses. Okay, God, what is it that you're trying to get us to see? What is it that you're designing to expose? What is it that you are exposing? And God, how do you desire for us to be able to respond? How do we respond? And what's happening in our community? How do we respond about what's happening in our city? How do we respond that when we look around Carbondale, it looks like a totally different place from when I came 18 years ago? How do we respond when our community is split, when new leadership wants to bring in a substation to the Irma Hay Center, but some are fighting against it and opposing it? How do we respond as the church? to the needs of our community when I can walk outside of my office and see bottles of Jack, rum, cigarette butts, people arguing outside of my office door because they came to get drugs and you didn't have what they needed. How do we respond as the body of Christ to the needs they're around us. Mm -hmm. Effectively understanding the times, here it is, takes spiritual discernment. Amen. Understanding, effectively understanding the times takes spiritual discernment. What spiritual discernment, Pastor? Is insight by the Holy Spirit into the plans and the purposes of God. You and I, out of all of the spiritual gifts that we could have, okay, you can have your tongues if you want to. That's good. Oh, you can have the gift of prophecy. That's all well and great. But the greatest gift that you and I can be able to have that is not related to just a particular person or a particular group of people is the spirit, is the gift of spiritual discernment so that we can be able to know truth from error. And I like the way the late theologian Charles Spurgeon he says that we can be able to know what's right and what's almost right. All right. Be able to have spiritual eyes to be able to see what's really going on beyond what's really going on. Right. Insight. Mm. To have almost intel about a particular situation because of the supernatural insight of the Holy Spirit into allowing us to know full aware about what's happening and what's transpiring. Mm -hmm. We got to study culture. Right. What's happening in the lives of our children and our teenagers as they've not been able to socially connect with their friends for the past 10, 11 months, almost year. Mm -hmm. They left for spring break the second week of March in 2020. And some of them haven't seen their friends since then. My little girl, Carrie, has only seen her teacher in person once, and that was drive-by. What are the emotional effects mm -hmm. that's taking place in the lives of our children because of the social disconnect? Studying the culture, understanding the times, analyzing the needs in our community and not just using prayer as a cover-up for not doing anything. Right, say it. But analyzing to say, okay, God, we want to study, we want to know, we want to be able to analyze and know what's going on and how we need to respond to what's happening how are we helping people that's dealing with this thing emotionally every time a facebook memory comes up on facebook i get a little sad yeah, yeah. because there's some posts related back to when we were together or the world was open and we were out and about oh how i can't wait to be able to go and sit down at, at, at cracker barrel and have my pancakes extra, extra crispy and have my uh, uh, my hash brown casserole with my pink lemonade i can't wait to be able to do that the simple things we for granted. Right. 
How are we helping people to navigate emotionally during this time? What do, you, what do you say to seasoned saints? That this was not just their place of getting spiritual fed, but this was their place of fellowship, their hub to connect with others. Mm-hmm. They couldn't wait to get here on Sunday to have their coffee after Sunday school. But for almost a year, no physical, physical contact for some right. at all. How are we understanding the times, not just to be nosy to see what God is up to, but how are we studying and understanding the times so that we can be able to do something about it? Get this. We can understand the times without studying the culture. Again, I just said we have to take we have to take every demographic and groups of people that we have within our church. Again, I'm not just talking about in the church. I'm talking about Hopewell. That we have to take leaders. I hope you're tuning in, and I hope you're hearing my heart this morning as I'm casting vision and teaching and preaching all at the same time. That we take our demographics of people and we're studying the culture and the trends to see the impact that's being made in their lives and what we can do to be able to shift them closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We study culture. Get this, again, not just to be nosy, but to be able to apply Scripture. I told you the sons of Issachar, they were individuals that knew the law. They had a good grasp on the law. They understood if we are going to shift, if we are going to change our intention, if we're going to change our, our power, if there's going to be a change in our direction, we need the word of God to be able to apply to every understanding, to everything that we have analyzed. We just can't leave it out in the open and leave them there. We have to take the word of God and make the word of God relevant to what's going on in their life. So that they can be able to walk away and have a clearer picture of God and to be able to see how the word of God is relevant to everything that's happening in their lives. If we are going to shift saints of God, we are going to have to grow comfortable with being uncomfortable and be willing to take the chance and to be willing to analyze and study culture so that we can have a greater understanding about how we're able to reach the present age. So if we're going to shift, y'all, we've got to understand the times. But here's the second thing. I told you I'm almost done today. If we're going to shift, shifting involves, here's the second thing, godly wisdom to know what to do and when to do it. I told you. I told you. The sons of Issachar is right there in the text. It's right there in the text. They understood the times. They understood the seasons. They understood the signs of the times and they knew the best course for Israel to take. If we are going to shift as a church, if we're going to shift as a body of believers, if we're going to shift as the body of Christ, we're going to need, we're going to need godly wisdom. We're going to need godly wisdom to know what to do and when to do it. We're going to have, we're going to need discernment and wisdom to be able to connect up and to marry up so that we will know what to do and when to do it. It is so, it is so important, saints of God, it is so imperative that in this season of our life as a church, as we are shifting, that as we are shifting, that we are mindful about when to do a thing. Because even though you may have great vision for something, even though you may have great aspiration for something, it may not be the time and the season and we could kill something because we do it prematurely and we do too early, but we have to be patient and patiently wait on God so that we will know the right time so that we won't show up too early, we won't show up too late, but that we will show up right on time. And if we keep our ear on the mouth of God, if we set ourselves up to submit to leadership and follow after our leader and to follow after godly leadership and follow after leaders that's wise, we won't miss our moment. We will know when to shift. We will know when to call to play. We will know when to change it up. We'll know. Why? Because we've kept our ears on the mouth of God to know when God is moving, to know when God is going to move, 
to have insight in knowing to take the time right now. Hey, here's the time. And here it is, saints of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If we're going to shift, oh, God, help me this morning. If we're going to shift, we're going to have to kill our flesh. God, help me this morning. I hear the lady, Elder Jenner Russell, that we're going to have to pull our flesh under subjection. She will walk around praying in the sanctuary and say, the flesh has to die. And she will say it over and over again. If we are going to shift, our flesh is going to have to die. Why, Pastor? Because there are some things, oh, God, help me this morning. There are some sacred cows that are going to have to come down. There are some traditions that are going to have to come down so that we can be able to shift. Because let me tell you this, I'm making an announcement this morning that what God is doing here at 400 East Main Street in the city of Carbondale, Illinois, is not going to be contained within Carbondale. But this thing, baby, that God is doing is going to shift. And you're going to see Hopewell, Texas, and Hopewell, this, and Hopewell, Georgia, and Hopewell, Kentucky, that it's going to expand beyond where we are right now. And in order for that to happen, our systems and our strategies will have to change to line up, not for where we are, but for where God is taking us. So I got to grow, got to grow comfortable with being uncomfortable. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be ready to shift at any moment because God may call, God may come, God may come up and say, hey, I gotta call the play real quick. I gotta change the game up real quick. And the last thing he needs is stubborn servants that stuck on what they've been doing all this time and say, well, God, we ain't always earned that way. God, I don't know if that's gonna work, but that we can be the shift. God, I don't know how it's gonna work. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but I trust you enough that if you said shift, I'm just gonna shift. If you say move. I'm just going to get in alignment and go where you're going. So I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to kill my flesh. I got to pull my flesh under subjection. I got to, I got to pray what Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, Lord. Woo. But your will be done. Jesus at that moment, he had to make a divine shift. He could not get caught up in his flesh. He did that a little bit. He said, Lord, if this be you, if let this come past a few times, God. But he said, at the end, not my will, but your will be done. We're going to need godly wisdom mm -hmm. to know what to do and when to do, to do it. Well, Pastor, how will we know what to do? We'll know what to do because we took the time to study and analyze culture. We took the time to investigate where we are and what's happening around us and trying to see what is it, God? How do you want us to be able to respond? Get this. How do you want us to be able to respond to the needs and the issues that are prevalent in our community? Not so that God can make a name for us, but so that God can be able to get the glory out of it. Don't need wisdom to know what to do. And here it is. Not just know what to do, but know when to do it. So that means, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The talk around town when the sons of Issachar got behind Deborah to support her as a judge over Israel. Now, you study the scriptures. She was the only woman that God used at that time to raise up to lead Israel. Can you think about the talk of the town that they got from everybody else, the, 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 the lack of support, the naysayers, the, the gossiping that was going on around town when the sons of Issachar stood behind and supported Deborah? Can you imagine what was going on, the death threats? Can you imagine the emails, the text messages, all the stuff that was on social media that was talking about them as they stood behind and supported a woman in leadership? Listen. Sons of Issachar, didn't, they didn't care because they knew what God was doing and they got themselves in alignment and partnership with God in what God was doing. They could care less about what everybody else was saying if they were saying something. Uh, they could care less about what they were saying or what they were talking about. All they cared about, we need to make sure that we are in full alignment with God so that when God says move, then we can be able to move and be in partnership with God in what he's doing. 
All right, Pastor. So, make this make sense. What do I need to do? I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, help me keep my ear to your mouth. Grant me wisdom, discernment, and courage. That's it. Nothing real deep. Lord, help me keep my ear to your mouth. Here it is, saints of God. I got, I, I, I got to bother us. We're going to have to discipline ourselves, and we're going to have to lead ourselves out of praying, out of emergencies. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. But having a sustainable, prayerful life. Where we got an ear to the mouth of God. Okay, Lord, you said don't date them. Okay, <laughs> I don't like it. My flesh don't like it. But because you said it, I'm going to do it. You said don't make this deal. Okay, don't get caught up in this pyramid scheme. Scheme. Okay, okay. What would what, you say, Lord? <laughs> Stay where I am. Okay, God, go. Okay, Lord. <laughs> to shift. Yeah. Change our intention to change our power, and to change our direction to make sure that we're in alignment with God and in partnership with God. God is up to something. Yes, he is. I don't know the full scope of what it is, but God is up to something. And God's hand is on the whole world missionary Baptist church. And God's hand is on me to lead Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church. I don't know all. But I know that this is a divine time for our church to shift. And let me tell you, it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm coaching myself to learn how to be uncomfortable because I don't like being uncomfortable. But in order to be able to shift, I'm going to have to be uncomfortable. In order for us to be able to shift, we're going to have to be uncomfortable. And so, Lord, help me to keep my ear to your mouth. I, I, I need to know. I need to know what you want me to do, how you want me to do it, and when you want me to do it. I don't want to be too early. I don't want to be too late. I want to be on time. I want to shift. I want to shift. Lord, I want to shift. I want to shift. I want to shift. I want to shift. God, help me to shift. Help me to shift. Help me to shift. Oh, well, I'm praying for us. I'm, pray I'm praying for us. That in this season of adjusting and adapting, let me tell you this, God has already given us the grace to do it. He's given us the grace. He's given us the grace to adjust. He's given us the grace to adapt. And he's given us the grace to shift. He's given us prophetic insight. Supernatural insight. To know what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And I'm grateful, I'm thankful for what he is going to do and how he's going to do it. Not so that whole world can be glorified, but that so that he can be glorified and that he receives the glory, all the glory out of it. If you're watching right now and you're not saved, let me invite you, my brother and my sister.